Are there more Brexit relocation announcements to come or have we seen the most of them? No, there are indeed. Um, we have some of the more obvious ones, Bank of America, European headquarters, uh, coming to Dublin from London. Uh, we also have Barclays doing the same. But there are other companies who are, who are already passported into Ireland who are increasing the services that they have and the products that they are presenting. What sort of total of jobs has Ireland already got in comparison with, say, Paris or Frankfurt and Berlin? It's, it's very difficult to put an actual number of jobs on it. There are companies who are choosing to relocate, but they're not actually saying how many jobs they're going to bring to other jurisdictions. Uh, but it isn't actually about the actual number of jobs any longer. It's the quality of the job and the value of the job that it's able to provide for the financial services centre that is Dublin and Ireland. Uh, we're very eager to move the Irish financial services up the value chain. Sure. And uh, with those jobs come additional jobs. Who are you meeting in New York? I say this because Jamie Dimon was meeting with the French finance minister yesterday and uh, just curious as to who you might be able to meet with here. Yeah, well, I met Jamie Dimon about a month ago. He met on Taoiseach Leo Varadkar and the Minister for Finance, Pascal Donoghue. Uh, JP Morgan are expanding the existing services uh, by a large amount. Uh, they bought a new building and currently constructing another building. So we're meeting with, with some of the very household names. Uh, you're talking about Morgan Stanley, uh, BNY uh, and, and others. One of the reasons that Frankfurt and Berlin are being chosen to some extent is the regulators are there, the regulators are in Germany. What are the realistic chances of Ireland winning, say, the European Banking Authority or European medicines agencies? Well, we are in competition with Frankfurt and Paris and another five cities in relation to relocating the European Banking Authority uh, from London to somewhere else. That will be concluded on, with a vote on the 20th of November. So. I've been out and about, I've been in 10 countries in the last two weeks, uh, presenting the Irish case for the relocation to Dublin. I think we have a very good chance, uh, but you don't ever really know until the night of the vote. Which will be? The 20th of November. 20th of November. All right. What about the delay in the Apple data centre? It's a two-year delay. Is that hurting Ireland's reputation in any way? Well, the delay is now over, which is very good news. Uh, it took longer than we would have anticipated, but our structures are quite clear. People have the right to access to the courts, to our jurisdiction, to our courts. And it's now concluded. The matter is finished and Apple can progress to the construction stage. Beyond Brexit and the European Union and winning business for Ireland that way and holding on to the 12% corporate tax rate, Rand Paul played golf with President Donald Trump yesterday and one of the things he talked about afterwards was the corporate tax rate in America going down and he specifically mentioned Ireland. That was the first country he mentioned <laughs> as a competitor. How concerned are you that if and when the corporate tax rate comes down in America and they say it's going to happen this year, that Ireland will lose some of the multinationals? <laughs> Yeah, but the, the perception is that the only reason those companies are in Ireland is because of the corporation tax rate. And that isn't the case. Uh, we have a hugely well-educated young population. We have the youngest population in Europe. 40% of the population are under 29 years of age. So the corporation tax rate is one issue. But the, what the jurisdiction in the United States chooses to do is a matter for themselves. Uh, we have a very stable rate. It's 12.5%. Was 12 and a half percent a decade ago when we went through particular economic uh, difficulties. Uh, it's 12 and a half percent now, and it won't be changing. Do you think that Brexit will get back on track, and by December we'll be onto the trade portion of the talks? I made a prediction um, about six weeks ago that prior to the conference season that the wheels would fall off the wagon. To some extent, that has happened. I see Prime Minister May is now going to. Brussels to meet with uh, Commission President Juncker and also to meet with Michel Barnier. Uh, I'm hopeful we can get them back on track. Uh, it's pretty clear at this moment in time that the EU27 leaders will not move it on to the next stage. There's three primary areas of which uh, there's an obligation to move beyond uh, the divorce bill itself, but also the interaction between citizens uh, from the EU and Britain and the British and the EU, but also very importantly for us, uh, the extent of which the border between the Northern, Northern Ireland of and course. the Republic of Ireland is and treated. And that's my final question. How, how much of a probability, since you're into predictions, do you give the 
UK staying in some kind of customs union with the European Union, which would really help out on the border issue? Well, for certain, I think that will happen for a transitional period. But we really don't know what's going to happen beyond that. But for us, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a zero-sum game. We cannot move. Uh, we've had peace on our island for, island for the last 20 years. The prospect of, of having a border reinstated uh, with different tariffs would lead to criminality, would really lead to smuggling. We've had that. that. That is always disguised in terms of republicanism and nationalism, and we're not going back there.